Good evening. Um, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, the liturgy tonight is a special one. Of course, this is the climax of the whole church year. And tonight's liturgy will actually begin outside with the new fire. If you want to join us out there, Carrie is going to be singing us out there so we can follow along and um, enjoy the singing, right? Great. Right. So thanks for joining us. Lord is my light, my light and salvation. In God I trust. In God I trust. The Lord is my light, my light and salvation. In God I trust, in God I trust. The Lord is my light, my light and salvation. In God. in Christ. On this most holy night in which our Lord Jesus passed over from death to life, the Church invites her members dispersed throughout the world to gather in vigil and prayer. For this is the Passover of the Lord, in which by hearing his word and celebrating his sacraments, we share in his victory over death. Let us pray. O oh God, through your Son you have bestowed upon your people the brightness of your light. Sanctify this new fire, and grant that in this Paschal Feast we may so burn with heavenly desires, that with pure minds we may attain to the festival of everlasting light. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
rejoice now, heavenly hosts and choir of angels, and let your trumpets shout salvation for the victory of our mighty King. Rejoice and sing now all the round earth, bright with a glorious splendor, for darkness has been vanquished by our eternal King. Rejoice and be glad now, Mother Church, and let your holy courts in radiant light resound with the praises of your people. All you who stand near this marvelous and holy flame, pray with me to God the Almighty for the grace to sing the, the worthy praise of this great life. Through Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to our God and his grace. It is truly right and good, always and everywhere, with our whole heart and mind and voice, to praise you, the invisible, almighty, and eternal God, and your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who at the feast of the Passover paid for us the debt of Adam's sin, and by his blood delivered your faithful people. This is the night when you brought our fathers, the children of Israel, out of bondage in Egypt, and led them through the Red Sea on dry land. This is the night when all who believe in Christ are delivered from the gloom of sin and are restored to grace and holiness of life. This is the night when Christ broke the bonds of death and hell and rose victorious from the grave. How wonderful and beyond our knowing, O oh God, is your mercy and loving kindness to us that to redeem a slave you gave a son. How holy is this night when wickedness is put to flight and sin is washed away. It restores innocence to the fallen and joy to those who mourn. It casts out pride and hatred and brings peace and concord. How blessed is this night when earth and heaven are joined and man is reconciled to God. Holy Father, accept our evening sacrifice, the offering of this candle in your honor. May it shine continually to drive away all darkness. May Christ, the morning star who knows no setting, find it ever burning. He who gives his light to all creation and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And I invite you to extinguish your candle right now, and then an usher will pick them up from you. in history, how he saved his people in ages past, and let us pray that our God will bring each of us to the fullness of redemption. Genesis. In, in the, the beginning, beginning, when God was creating the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and the darkness covered the face of the deep, 
while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome, and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on the earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind, and bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. There was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swim, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given green plant food for food and it was so God saw everything that he had made and indeed it was very good and there was evening and there was morning the sixth day thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all their multitude and on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done 
So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work he had done in creation. These, These are, are the, the generations, generations of the heavens and, and the earth, earth when, when they, they were created. The word of the Lord. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and its mate, a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and its mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the air also, male and female, to keep their kind alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth for forty days and forty nights. Every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the 17th day of the month, on that day all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened. The rain fell on the earth forty days and forty nights. On the very same day, Noah with his sons, Shem and Ham and Japheth, and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons entered the ark. They and every wild animal of every kind, and all domestic animals of every kind, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, and every bird of every kind, every bird, every winged creature, they went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh in which there was breath of life. And those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The flood continued on the earth. The flood continued 40 days on the earth, and the waters increased, 
and bore up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The water swelled and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the face of the waters. At the end of the forty days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made and sent out the raven. And it went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent out the dove from him to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set its foot, and it returned to him to the ark. For the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took it and brought it into the ark with him. He waited another seven days and again sent out the dove from the ark. And the dove came back to him in the evening, and there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days and sent out the dove and it did not return to him anymore. In the 601st year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked and saw the face of the ground was drying. In the second month, on the 27th day of the month, the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, Go out of the ark, you and your wife, and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, so that they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out with his sons and his wife and his son's wives. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you. For all generations I have set my bow on the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. The word of the Lord.
you, God, you have placed in the skies the sign of your covenant with all living things. Grant that we who are saved through water and the Spirit may worthily offer to you our sacrifice of thanksgiving. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone, and let us serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that my Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see you and see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you only have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. The angel of God who was going before the Israelite army moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel, and so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them. All the Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers at the morning watched the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so they, and they turned with difficulty. The Egyptian said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had fallen them into the sea. Not one of them remained, but the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them. 
Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from slavery under Pharaoh, to be a sign for us of the salvation of all nations by the water of baptism. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may be numbered among the offspring of Abraham and rejoice in the inheritance of Israel. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, 
so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exalt over you with a loud singing on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time. And I will save the lame and gather the outcast. And I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time I will bring you home, at that time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth. When I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Through the Paschal Mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lenten observance is ended, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism, by which we once renounced Satan and all his works, and promised to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ. believe in God, the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the Apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will look for God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin? Repent and return to the Lord. I will rest Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will rest Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will rest Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will rest May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever.
I saw water proceeding out of the temple. From the right side it flowed. And all those to whom the water came shall be saved. Alleluia. out of the temple. From the right side it flowed, and all those to whom the water came shall be saved. Alleluia.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will row away the stone for us from this entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who is crucified. He has been raised, and he is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. And all that had been commanded them, they were told briefly to those around Peter. And afterward, Jesus himself sent out through them from east to west the sacred and imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation. The Gospel of the Lord. God, who gives us new life. Amen. Amen. The women come in grief and despair, wondering how they will move the stone to get the body, to get to the body, to anoint it, to do a last, very tender service to the one they followed and loved. They arrive to find the stone already rolled aside, the tomb open. On entering, they encounter a man in white, and they're frightened. He says, don't be afraid. You are looking for Jesus. He is not here. He has been raised. Go, tell his disciples, he has gone ahead of you, and you will see him in Galilee. An open, empty tomb. An angelic vision. An incredible proclamation after days of emptiness, fear, and pain. Is it any wonder that the women were overwhelmed? Is it any wonder that they fled from the tomb, confused, and mute. That is how Mark's gospel originally ended, with the women fleeing from the tomb. Is it any wonder that the early church just couldn't bear to let this be how it ended? And is it any wonder they added more ending to this gospel? one where the women do tell the disciples, even if they aren't always believed. Neither the early followers of Jesus nor we seem very comfortable with mystery, with awe, with silence. We want closure, not an open ending. We want to have it pulled together and explained. Somehow it isn't enough to see the response of the three faithful women. What we are given in this gospel this evening is not trumpets and alleluias. We are given the women's fearful wonder and silence. And we are invited to join them there in the confusion, in the not understanding, in the expansive mystery of the empty tomb, 
the risen Christ. It's hard to be left with just amazement and silence. We want more. We want to hear of the joy and excitement of that morning. We want to feel resurrection and new life. We're ready to move on from the tomb. And there is time for exclamation and celebration. We move into it tonight as we sing hallelujahs and ring bells. But for now, for these few moments right now, we are invited into the silence and the awe of these three women. Are we able to inwardly hold their wordless wonder as we move into the light of the resurrection? Are we able to allow the mystery to resonate in the excitement of the proclamation? He is not here. God has raised Jesus from the dead and Jesus goes before you and us. Amen.
Please be seated. Um, just three quick announcements. Um, if you love church, we're doing this all over again tomorrow morning at 8 and 10. So come back tomorrow morning. Um, tonight, actually following this service, uh, there is chocolate and champagne in the parlor. So, um, and sparkling cider. Oh, and spark, sparkling cider as well. So swing on by the parlor tonight. And then tomorrow after the Easter egg hunt, for children young and old, there is an Easter egg hunt uh, that will be, I think, outside, either outside or up in the parish hall. I'm not sure which. You'll find it. Where the eggs are, there will be the Easter egg hunt. Um, so thanks so much for being here. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Will you stand? come of thee, O Lord. taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Christ has taught us, 
we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us be pleased. Alleluia. The table of bread and wine is now made ready. It is the table of company with Jesus and all those who love him. So come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more. You who have been to this table often and you who have not been for a long time. You who have tried to follow Jesus. And you who have failed, come, it is Christ who invites all of us to meet him here. <coughs> the gifts of God for the people of God.
let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this evening and forevermore. Amen. Amen.